Okay, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good morning everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, hari ini kita akan masuk uh, new subtopic and the final subtopic from chapter 5. They are called alkenes. Okay, so this alkene is basically simply hydrocarbons but then with functional group of carbon, carbon number 1. Okay, we'll start with the nomenclature of alkene. We okay, that can spend so much time on this nomenclature since the basic rule for nomenclature is going to be the same as in the alkene. Even if we learn about the nomenclature of alcohol or carboxylic acid and stuff, the basic thing is still the same. Parent, the suffix, and also the prefix. Okay. So, uh, this is the that we have the functional group of carbon carbon number one. When you have functional group present in the compound, you need to prioritize the numbering starts from there. Okay. The first two, the numbering must favor the lowest number of carbon bearing the functional group. Okay, walaupun you got substituents nearer to the other end, tetapi kalau the other end you got functional group yang present first, then you must first prioritize the uh, functional group. Okay, and then the locations of carbon-carbon double bond must be emphasized in compounds name due to the positional isomorphism. Bila kita ada functional group present, means kita ada possibility to form positional isomers. Means, kalau the carbon-carbon double bond is in between carbon number 1 and 2, then we need to put 1. 1 to indicate the positions of the uh, functional group, not just the substituent. Before this, masa alkin, kita tak ada functional group. Jadi, dia punya locations hanya pada substituents. But now, when you have functional group present, then you must indicate the uh, locations of your functional group as well. Okay, if you got more than 1 carbon-carbon double bond present, you must emphasize their locations and add prefix. Maksudnya, kalau dekat carbon-carbon double bond tu, nombor satu dengan tiga. So, awak kena masukkan one, three. Sebab dia ada dua, kita kena letak dye. Kalau ada tiga, one, three, five, let's say, try in. Tuan? Okay. 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 Okay, Miss. So, kita try buat sikit lah. Uh, tak banyak saya nak buat ni, Miss. Sebab kita nak tengok reactions banyak. Okay, so for the first compound here, could you please tell me who gonna be the parent of this carbon chain? Who gonna be the parent of this carbon chain? Hexin. Apa dia? Hexin with how many carbons? So six. six carbon. Okay, so six carbon means nama dia hexane. But now, do you have any other family attached to this parent? Ada family tak? Tadi awak cakap hex tu hanyalah parent. Kita ada suffix, kita ada prefix. Now we're talking about the suffix, the family. Ada methane. Apa? No, no, now. We are talking now about the suffix. Suffix tu siapa? Family ke? Anak ke? Anak. 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 Anak suffix. Family dia. Ha? Family. Family. Mm. So family, ada tak family lain dalam dalam parent ni? Tadi awak sebut hex sing. Yang tu baru parent. Basically hex. The hex part on leader, parent. The family belongs to whether you have functional group or not. Now in your compound, do you have any functional group present? Yes. Yes. Can I know what are they? Carbon, carbon, double bond. Carbon carbon double bond. So when you have carbon carbon double bond, will the name of the family remain unchanged? Simply A. In. In. E -N -E. Okay, so instead of having hexane, now we have hexene. Okay, so then your numbering will start from what? From the left or from the right? From the right. From the right, okay. If you look here, if you start from the right, we're going to have this carbon-carbon number 1 located at carbon number 1. 
if on from the left kita akan ada carbon number 2 holding the substituent if you have functional group present and yang and macam mana even though let's say eh, yang ni dekat carbon number 3 pun awak kena prioritas yang ada double bond instead of the substituent lagi nearer to the other end okay so for this case sebab memang kat carbon number 1 the numbering will starts from the right Okay, and then from the right, you know at carbon number 5, we have substituents of alkyl group. What is the name of this alkyl group? Methyl. 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 So, can you please tell me the name of this compound, the complete name of this compound by using IUPAC nomenclature? Um, five hyphen uh, metal hexene. Okay, hexene. You say hexene or hexene? Hexene. Hexene. Just now we say if we have uh, if we have um functional group, then we have the tendency to form positional isomers. If let's say I change the positions of this carbon carbon double bond in between carbon number two and carbon number three. Will the name still be the same as in the carbon carbon double bond between one and two? No. No means when you have functional group, you must also emphasize the positions of this functional group, not just the substituent. Just now you say five metal, okay, betul. Eh? But instead of hexene only, you must put hex one hexene. So about at carbon number one, we have this E. Kalau ada dekat carbon number 2 and 3, dia adalah 2 hexene. Kalau ada dekat carbon number 3, kita ada 3 hexene. Boleh? Okay. Boleh, Miss. So, the name nanti akan jadi 5 metal. Katanya ada 1 hexene tau. Okay. Dia, dia ada dua cara nak tulis tapi saya nak buat guna yang bawah ni. 1 metal, 1 hexene. Usually untuk 1 kita tak letak tapi sebabnya ada possibility sepatutnya dia letak kat sini. Nanti saya edit sikit untuk notes. Okay, yang ni pun cara lama sebenarnya. One metal hex, hex is the parent. One in belongs to the family. So the other way, new way untuk tulis adalah one hexene. Bila one hexene dah tak perlu dah letak uh, hyphen in between uh, hex dengan in ni. Okay, second structure here. What is the longest carbon chain that you have? How many carbons that makes up the longest carbon chain? Seven. Seven. So that's no. seven. The name of the parent should be? Seven. Hat. Hat. Okay. Now you have functional group present in your compound and they are in. Okay. Now you need to you need Hat. to do the numbering. The numbering will start from the right or from the left. Right. From the right. Okay, from the right, if we start from the right, we're going to have this carbon-carbon double bond in between carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. Means 1, 2, 3. If we start from the left, 1, 2, 3, we got substituents. But this functional group got higher priority than the substituents. Therefore, the numbering will start from the right. Okay, now what is the name of this compound? Plus methyl 3 heptene. 3 heptene. 5 metal, 3 heptene. Now saya tak ubah. 5 metal, 3 heptene. Sekejap eh, saya ubah lesek sekejap. Terus So 5 metal 3 hyphen. And then the last one, the numbers carbon chain should be? What is the longest carbon chain here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ke? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Dua-dua pun sama. Jadi 6 maksudnya? 
hexene. Hexene. Okay. Hmm. But now you have two carbon carbon double bond present in your compound. So you must put prefix. Prefix of apa kita nak pakai? Kalau dua kita akan guna? Dye. 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 Okay now you have the longest carbon chain of hex and then at carbon number, number berapa? Kita nak menumbering daripada kanan ke kiri? Kanan. Kanan. Sebab kita jumpa this carbon carbon number one at carbon number one dulu. Walaupun number dua dan yang substituents kena prioritize the lowest number of functional group. Maksudnya positions dia. Okay, so that all starts from the right. So what is the name of this compound? 5-methyl-1-4-hex-a-di-hexin. Okay, hexa. Hexa tu datang pada hexin kan? Uh, tapi kita nak letak in. So, hexa di in. Hex for, okay, hex. Hexa, sorry. 5-methyl, hex 1-4 di in. Ataupun 5-methyl, 1-4 hexa di in. Ha, kalau awak letak 1-4 kat depan, awak kena simpan the hexa. Okay, kalau kita nak tulis secara baru kan, nama dia 5-methyl. Instead of 1-4 in between, letak dekat depan tapi ada hyphen 1-4 uh, hyphen hexa di in. Okay? Okay. Alright. So, now kita proceed dengan nomenclature of cycloalkene. Bila cyclic structure, dia ada sedikit perbezaan dari segi naming dia. Okay, tapi tak banyak lah. Okay, so the first um, kita panggil ni, the first rule yang kita kena tengok Number the cycloalkene, cycloalkenes so that the double bond is between carbon number one and two and the first substituent has the lowest number possible. Sama juga kita kena prioritize the locations of the functional group to first uh, be encountered barulah kita tengok and the substituents. Walaupun awak nampak substituent banyak kat the other side, focus on the, on the functional group dulu. Kalau ada satu, kalau ada dua kita boleh check lah yang mana dulu. Okay, let's say you are given this compound. You have two carbon-carbon double bond present in this compound. So, kita nak start daripada mana? Awak kena prioritize this carbon-carbon double bond and the combinations of number is the lowest as possible. Okay, if let's say you start from here, you're going to have one, two, three. Maksudnya awak akan jumpa dekat carbon number one and carbon number three, right? Yeah. Okay, but with no um, substituents attached to it. Let's say we start from here. One, two, three. Okay, awak akan ada dekat carbon number one and three juga. Okay, tapi kita ada functional group, uh, kita ada substituents in between. Okay, awak ada dua dah. Satu, dua, tiga ataupun satu, dua, tiga. Okay, lagi. Boleh tak kita start pada sini? Satu, sebab dia nak prioritas kan? Satu, dua, tiga, empat. So kita ada combinations of one and four. So between one and four and one and three, awak rasa siapa yang lagi rendah dia punya uh, combinations? One and three. One and three. One and three. So let's, let's say we take the one and three. Um, which way are you going to take? The clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise ni, anti-clockwise yang ke sini. Clockwise ke sini. One, two, three. Anti-clockwise. One, two, three. Anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. So the numbering will start from here. Anti-clockwise. Yes, sebab the combinations of uh, functional group present sama one and three. Tapi dekat sini kita ada plus point. Kalau sini kita ada substituents present. Sini tak ada substituents. So kita akan prioritize this um, rotations dia ke arah ni. Okay, jadi what is the name of your compound now? Two, five. Di methyl one three cyclo pentadiene. Okay, so the kawan awak cakap two five di methyl. Okay, good. One three cyclo pentadiene. Okay, kalau nak lagi tak nak letak ni kat depan, awak letak two five di methyl cyclo pent hyphen one three hyphen diene. Okay, tapi saya suka awak stick pada new way of writing the name. Okay, eh? boleh eh? no? nak tentukan the numbering. Check you punya um, possibilities. Okay, the last one, let's say you have this compound. Okay, so now, who's going to be your parent? You now have two ring. 
not ring, you have two psychic structure, but then one of them got functional group. So, siapa yang akan jadi uh, the parent? What is your parent's name now? Cyclohexadiene. Okay, cyclohexadiene. Okay, so the, now the numbering starts from where? From here, 1, 2, 3 is anti-clockwise. Or from here, 1, 2, 3 is clockwise. Clockwise or anti-clockwise, the numbering? Clockwise. Clockwise. So the numbering akan rotate clockwise sebab at carbon number 1 here, we got this substituents. So if you have uh, cycloalkene as substituent, how are you going to name them? Okay, jadi sekarang ni, awak kena letak selalunya kalau kita ada ring, uh, kita ada cyclic structure, kita tak letak number dah kalau setakat satu substituents. Tapi sekarang ni awak ada functional group. Jadi kena letak at carbon number berapa? Okay, sebab kita mungkin ada double bond at carbon number 3 juga. Jadi, sebab tu kena emphasize this number nanti. So, what is the name of this compound? Cyclohexane. Eh? Cyclohexane? Nama penuh, nama penuh dia. One and hyphen cyclohexane. And hyphen one. Three. Hyphen one, hyphen three. Hyphen cyclohexane. Dain, dain, dain. Dain. Eh, Isa, dain, okay? Dain. Okay, good, good. Thank you, thank you. So, one cyclohexal comes from the cyclohexal carbon, ada enam, kita ada cyclic structure, and then one, three, emphasize the locations of the carbon-carbon double bond, and then your parent is cyclohexal, and then your suffix is the dain, so ada dua carbon-carbon double bond. Itu je awak kena tahu untuk naming of this um, alkin. Saya tunjuk sikit je. Dalam awak punya notes tu banyak sangat contoh. So awak boleh tengok lagi lah yang lebih-lebih tu. Benda yang sama saya dah cover dah dalam lima structure yang kita try buat ni. Okay now kita akan proceed to the uh, apa kita panggil ni? Physical properties. Okay physical properties untuk alkin kita akan look at the boiling point. Okay they are very similar to that of alkin sebab dia hanyalah ada carbon dan juga hydrogen. Okay, tetapi dia ada sedikit perbezaan. Sedikit perbezaan dia kat mana? Sebab kita sekarang ada carbon-carbon double bond. And if you recall, if you recall in chapter 4, um, isomerism part, specifically the diastromer, we have the restricted rotations of carbon-carbon double bond tu. Okay, kita akan tengok boiling point uh, particularly for cis and trans isomers. Okay, so tak apa. Uh, sekarang ni kita tengok general point dia dulu. Boiling point will increase as the molecular size uh, becomes larger and then when the molecules get bigger, van der Waals forces pun akan bertambah sebab surface area exposed to the reactions pun increases. Therefore, the van der Waals forces become stronger. Uh, dia akan tunjuk dekat bacaan boiling point awak. Makin tinggi, makin susah nak break dia sebab makin kuat. Okay, now we're going to look at these two isomers. Since we have this alkene, that's why we're going to look at these two compounds. So they are basically two butene. This two butene, you got how many carbons all together in this compound? You have but four. four. Okay. Now you have in. In means you got double bond. Both double bond is located at carbon number two and carbon number three in between them. But then what makes them different from one another is the trans and also cis isomers. Trans maksudnya you got different groups on different sides. Okay, kalau cis, you got same group on the same side. It's different group lah. Same group tapi different side. Ni same group, different side. Okay, who do you think gonna have higher bonding point between cis and trans? They are not planar. Trans. Sorry? Cis. Cis. Cis or trans? Agak -agak. Cis. 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 Okay. So, kalau awak cakap cis, sekarang sebab awak ada nota juga kan. Okay, let's say, kalau katalah kita tak ada langsung idea tentang the cis and trans. Okay, now you look at this. Kita sekarang ni, kat sini kan, electron rich ke electron deficient? Banyak. Kalau you ada carbon-carbon double bond, banyak electron ke tak? Banyak. As compared to CH3, dia kuranglah sikit. Jadi, bila kita ada macam ni, dia akan macam white. Sebab dia, walaupun dia C dengan C, ikutkan non-polar. Okay, tetapi bila sini kita ada carbon-carbon double bond, dia akan create that polarity. So, kita akan ada macam polar bond lah. Bila polar bond, kita akan indicate guna polar arrow, right? You still remember? 
the one that we have learned in chapter 4 last semester, the yeah. polar arrow. Yeah, the polar arrow will pointing towards more electronegative or less electronegative atom. The polar oh, arrow yeah. will will pointing towards upper, less electronegative or more electronegative atom. More. More. Okay. So in this case, we have this CH3, CH3, and then C. This carbon carbon double bond on both side, they got more electrons in them. Jadi macam mana kita nak bagi tahu trans dengan cis butene ni siapa ada higher bonding point, kita akan guna polar arrow. Okay. Sekarang ni, this carbon carbon double bond got higher electronegativity than that of CH3. Sebab tu polar arrow pointing towards uh, this carbon carbon double bond. Also, you got metal group from uh, lower side here, jadi dia pun akan, pun akan pointing upwards. Yes. Bila diorang bertembung, diorang somehow akan cancel out each other, right? Yep. Uh, bila cancel out each other, maksudnya dia akan simply jadi macam non-polar lah kan? Sebab tak ada difference lah. Dia mu. Ingat lagi tak? Ingat. Okay, and then for this cis, okay, even yes, though they the same side, tapi dia ada satu advantage here. When you have the same side uh, of this car CH3, CH3, yang ni high electronegativity. So, dia akan pointing towards here, dia akan pointing towards here. Jadi, bila dia dua-dua pointing towards the same uh, side and then dia tak ada something else yang tolak dia, dia akan jadi berat dekat belah uh, electronegative tu. Jadi, dia akan jadi polar. So, dia tak akan cancel out each other. So, dia akan jadi polar polar molecule. So sebab tu lah cis uh, isomers got higher volume point than the trans isomers. Lebih ke? Faham eh? Kenapa cis lagi tinggi? Faham. Okay. Next one. Kita nak tengok reactions eh. Reactions in alkene. Okay. In alkene we got only two reactions. The two reactions is uh, our combustions and also uh, free radical substitutions. But then in alkene, you got to know the mechanism for only free radical substitutions. Dalam alkenes, we have a number of reactions and then we have a number of mechanisms as well. Okay, jadi uh, sekarang ni saya akan uh, bagi tahu one by one reactions apa. Okay, bukan semua reactions melibatkan double um, alkene terus step wide. Okay, kita ada juga yang baru nak form alkene. Ada yang alkene baru nak buat reactions. Okay, boleh ke? So lain sikit lah saya punya susunan nota saya lain sikit dengan dalam lecture note awak. Okay. Ni saya nak bagi awak faham one by one tak adalah macam bercampur semua. Tahu? Okay. okay. So now we'll start with the rules to apply in alkenes. So basically there are two rules to apply in alkenes. The first one is called Shazaf's rule. Okay, Shazaf's rules, they are involved in the preparations of alkene. Bila kita kata preparations of alkene, kita akan start dengan alkene ke kita baru nak buat alkene? Baru nak buat. Baru nak buat. You know, kalau kita nak buat alkene, alkene got multiple bond. Means if you want to form the alkene, you must eliminate something, is it? Yes, please. Yes, kalau eliminate maksudnya asalnya awak kena ada uh, structure yang macam kiranya saturated hydrocarbon lah tapi tak semestinya ada hydrogen sahaja. Okay so we are going to involve elimination reactions when you are going to prepare this alkene. Okay what is this Shazaf's rule? In an elimination reactions, okay ingat nak buat alkene kita involve eliminations. The major product is the most stable alkene. Commonly the most highly substituted alkene. Kenapa dia kata ada major product ni? Okay, because you already learned about the classes of hydrogen, the classes of carbo, uh, carbon, is it? Kita ada sampai tertiary, kita ada sampai primary. Okay, so maybe in your initial original structure, you have more than one possibility, you have more than one classes of hydrogen present or more than one or more than one classes of carbon present. Jadi sebab kita ada different classes of uh, this species present, diorang akan bagi major or minor product. Maksudnya ada more than one product to be formed. Bukannya kalau kita buat satu reaction tu, walaupun dia ada banyak kita bagi satu je. Tak. Dia ada possibilities. Okay. Jadi kita nak tengok sama ada uh, 
reactions tu boleh bagi major product, kita akan guna di Shazaf's rule. Shazaf's rule kata, kalau alkin tu banyak substituents, substituents tu keliling carbon-carbon double bond, maksudnya dia adalah major product. Okay, so let's say we have this alkin. Okay, if you look at all this alkin, apa difference between your own? What can you see from this alkyl? Number of carbon. Yes, number, number of, of carbon. carbon. Number of alkyl group, kan? Yes, miss. Yeah, number of alkyl group. Now, we want to focus on this carbon-carbon double bond. And on this carbon-carbon double bond, how many substituents, maksud, uh, how many substituents attached to it? Okay, kalau dalam first case, kita ada three. Kalau dalam second alkyl ni, kita ada dua. Kalau yang the first alkin, yang, yang this third alkin kita ada satu and this one got no um, alkyl group attached to it. So when you have more substituents around this carbon-carbon double bond, means the stability of alkin increases. Therefore, this is going to be the major product as compared to this one. Okay? Itu adalah Shazaf's rule. Dia terlibat dalam preparations of alkin sahaja. Kalau soalan tanya, dia dah minta awak buat reactions uh, untuk form alkin, tiba-tiba dia tanya, state the name of rules used in this preparations of alkin. So, kena bagilah Shazaf's rule. Okay. Ejaan pun kena betul. Tak boleh eja ikut dan awak je. Ni nama orang. So, kalau ada apostrophe, letak apostrophe. Kalau ada lepas, uh, maksudnya dia punya apostrophe tu after S pun kena hati-hati juga sebab ada yang lepas S. Okay. Now, we have two reactions involving preparations of alkene. Untuk buat alkene, ada dua cara. One is dehydration of alcohol. So, this dehydration of alcohol is simply the name of reaction, not the type of reaction. The type of reactions when you are preparing alkene is only elimination. So, eliminations for this dehydration, eliminations for this dehydrohalogenation as well. But now, this is the name indicates how I'm going to start doing this reaction. When we say D, D here means eliminate. You want to eliminate. Okay, D points in it eliminates. Dia nak eliminate, eliminate siapa? Hydrations. Bila sebut hydrations, awak faham perkataan hydrations ni ada apa? Hydrate. Hydrate. Water. Water. So you water. want to eliminate water. Okay, awak nak eliminate water. Dari siapa? Dari alcohol. Okay, kita tahu alkohol kita mesti ada functional group okay. apa? Dalam alkohol kena ada functional group apa? Hydroxyl. Hydroxyl, okay. You're going to start with this alcohol. Okay, given to you this, uh, this alcohol as an example. Oh, yes. And then, if you want to eliminate this, uh, this water, sebab kita kata dehydration, nak remove water. One hydrogen comes from this carbon, one hydrogen comes from this OH, kita nak eliminate water. Kena ambil dari karbon yang berbeza sebab kita nak buat double bond in between them. Okay, jadi sekarang ni untuk eliminate, boleh ke eliminate senang-senang ataupun kita perlukan other reagent to help these reactions to proceed? Boleh terus keluar ke? Okay, ada reagent. So, awak memang kena hafal these reactions together with the reagent. In order for you to remove this water, you are going to use this concentrated H2SO4 with the presence of heat. Must have this concentrated H2SO4 with the presence of heat. Without heat, these reactions won't proceed. Kena ada uh, heat as well dengan concentrated acid. Okay, by having this concentrated H2SO4 and also heat, you're going to remove this water. So by removing this water, you're going to form carbon-carbon double bond between the first and the second carbon together with the water molecule to be removed. Okay, this is the first reaction untuk alkene and the preparations of alkene. And bila saya tulis ini mekanism, memang ada mekanism yang kita akan belajar untuk this part, dehydration of alcohol. So this is going to be the second mechanism out of all mechanism yang kita akan belajar dalam uh, organic chemistry. First one, free radical dalam alkene. Dalam alkene kita ada dehydration of alcohol lagi satu, so dah dua. Okay, next one. Dehydrohalogenation of a halo alkenes. Maksudnya D ni tadi saya cakap apa? Dia buat apa? Kalau D. Elimination. Elimination. So dia nak eliminate siapa? Okay, kita tengok. Hydrohalogenation. So kita ada kat sini hydro. Hydro ni dia indicate siapa? 
Water. Ah, huh? water? Water is hydration, is hydro? Kita ada dua benda sekarang. Hydrogen. Oh, hydrogen. hydrogen. Okay, another one kita ada? Halogen. 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 So you want to remove hydrogen and also halogen. Itu maksudnya. Okay, so you nak remove daripada siapa? Tengok dia kata off siapa? Halo alkenes. Halo alkenes, you got alkene with halogen attached to it. So in other words, the alkyl halides. Halogen comes from the group 17. Let's say you have these 1, 2, 2 chloro, 2 methyl propane. Okay, you have 2 chloro, 2 methyl propane and undergo reactions uh, with KOH ethanol with the ref, uh, under the presence of reflux. Maksudnya reflux ni sama macam heat tapi reflux ni dia perlukan air. Air yang support heat, api sahaja. Reflux dia masih kita nak heat tetapi ada circulations of air. Okay. So that's what we call reflux. Kena guna reflux, jangan guna heat dia tak sama. And awak tengok ini acid, ini adalah base. Sebab apa? Sebab dia nak encounter this OH basic. Kalau ini dia nak encounter acid. Sebab tu dia acid base. Dia as base acid macam tu. So kita ada KOH ethanol under reflux. So nanti dia akan remove this hydrogen dan juga halogen. Nah sekali dapatlah produk yang sama macam dekat atas. Kita dapat carbon-carbon double bond with this removal of small molecule HCl. Okay so yang ni yang awak kena hafal. Awak kena tahu bila buat uh, eliminations, kena ada this reagent. Lepas tu kita akan dapat this product. Kena tahu this reagent, kena dapat this product. Macam tu. Okay. Okay, so dua reaction dalam alkin kita dah belajar. Now kita nak tengok dia punya mechanism. Okay. So sebelum tu, uh, certain alcohol or halo alkins, okay, when they undergo eliminations, they are going to form more than one alkins. Sebab apa? Okay, look at your compound here. Macam yang tadi, okay, kita akan remove antara diorang ni ataupun antara carbon ni, antara carbon ni. Dia sama, environment dia sama. Diorang adalah tertiary carbon. Okay. Tapi kalau kes ni, dia kata, Dia bagi two chlorobutane and then look at your, this one, this carbon holding the chlorine. So carbon-carbon double bond awak, kita akan melibatkan either uh, hydrogens from this carbon or hydrogen from this carbon. Basically, the adjacent carbon. Sebelah-sebelah. Bukan yang sebelah lagi satu pun. Sebelah-sebelah, direct di sebelah-sebelah. Jadi, awak ada possibility to form carbon-carbon double bond in here and carbon-carbon double bond in here. Okay. Let's say kita remove the car the hydrogens from adjacent carbon yang belah kiri, kita akan dapat this product of two butene. Kalau kita remove hydrogens from this carbon on the right, kita akan dapat one butene. So, can I know what is the name of rules that we use to determine the major and minor product of alkene? Say that's rule. Yeah, Shazab's rule. So, Shazab's rule cakap apa? Macam mana kita nak determine major product? Kita nak tengok apa dekat dalam alkin tu ada apa? Kenapa dia kata two butene major? Kenapa dia kata one butene minor? Because the major one has the most substituents. Okay, most substituents. How many substituents present now? Ada berapa? Two. Two. Kalau one butene ada berapa substituents? One. Dua. One. Satu saja awak, kita fokus on the carbon-carbon double bond. Tengok keliling dia yeah. ada siapa. Hydrogen tak masuk dalam alkyl group. Okay. Satu. Jadi sebab itulah kita pilih two butene as major product because they got more substituents around this carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. Bila kita ada more substituents, kita ada tendency to form major product because they are more stable, okay? Okay, KO? Okay. Okay, so now kita okay. akan proceed to okay. the mechanism. Okay, mechanism in preparations of alkene involve only for dehydrations of alcohol. Kita eliminate water from alcohol. Okay, saya akan tunjuk dua contoh. Example number one here, it tells you about uh, product to be formed is only one product. Okay, kenapa dapat one product only? Sebab starting material awak hanya ada satu saja possibility. Contohnya kita nak buang water kan, water adalah H dengan OH. Now this carbon bearing the OH and then the adjacent carbon got the same environment. Is it? 
Samakan environment dia CH3, 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 betul tak? Ya yeah. Sekalipun dia remove hydrogen from the adjacent carbon up here Dia akan dapat sama juga yes. dengan bawah Dia akan dapat sama juga dengan yang kiri Sebab itulah yes, only yes. one product of alkene is formed okay, Kenapa kena tahu one product of alkene is formed Dengan one product of uh, more than one product of alkene is formed Sebab akan ada satu steps yang dia agak berbeza Bila ada more than one alkene to be formed Awak kena include extra steps Kalau hanya ada satu alkene boleh proceed sajalah Buat macam biasa ikut step by step ni Nanti saya akan tunjuk dekat mana. Okay, so we expect to uh, uh, when they undergo reactions with concentrated H2SO4 together with the heat, you are going to form this two methyl propene. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So this mechanism kena guna curly arrow because they show the movement of electrons. If you are asked to draw the mechanism, to write the mechanism, to outline the mechanism, by only stating what is the reagent, what is the species without showing the curly arrow, then no marks will be rewarded for you. Mechanism sangat pentingkan curly arrow. Without curly arrow, they are not called as mechanism. Okay? Saya tegur siap-siap sebab memang akan ada orang tak buat langsung the curly arrow. What's the point of answering the questions about mechanism without curly arrow? Okay? Alright. Alright. So now, the first step. The step number one, yes. protonations of alcohol. So you aim to make the alcohol to become protonated. Maksud protonated, kita nak positifkan the alcohol. So you have this alcohol compound to start with. You initially got only OH without positive or negative charge. So you aim to make this OH to become OH+. Plus. Kalau nak dapatkan dia plus, kena donate one of the lone pad to someone else. Okay, so sekarang ni, kita tahu the reactions will undergo reactions with concentrated H2SO4. This concentration, this concentrated H2SO4 is only catalyst. Means, towards the end, dia akan regenerate. Tetapi dia, are being, dia akan digunakan dalam reactions, tapi lastly dia akan regenerate. Dia hanya aid the reactions. So the first step, you're going to react these two. Okay, so between these two, who do you think going to be the nucleophile? The nucleophile means the one to donate the electrons. You want to form this alcohol uh, positive. So the, this OH is going to be positive. Dia akan donate this one of the long pair. Jadi siapa akan jadi nucleophile? Alcohol oh. or acid? Okay. Alcohol, alcohol or acid? Alcohol. So then the extra electron here. So as for the first step, first one of the long pair from this oxygen at this OH will attack one of the hydrogen at the concentrated acid. Sometimes they gives you H3O plus. Sometimes kita guna H2SO4 but usually kita guna H2SO4 lah. H3O plus tu selalunya untuk um, yang mild ataupun uh, lower acidity. Okay, lepas tu, lepas dia dah attack, adakah dia akan ambil semua ni? Dia ambil hydrogen. Hydrogen boleh buat dua bond ke? Kalau kita remain dia as it is? Tak boleh. Dia jadi. The bond between H dengan O ni, kita akan breakskan dia. Bila dia breaks, dia akan leave the acid. This acid now will become the electron rich species. In other words, the new nucleophile lah. Sebab dia ada HSO4 minus. Dia jadi OSO3 H negative. Okay, but then the alcohol yang kita ada tadi tu, dia akan jadi protonated alcohol in here. Nami, ni awak punya protonated alcohol. Alcohol awak dah jadi positif. So during the first step, your aim is to form this protonated alcohol. Okay? Okay. Okay, and look carefully if the uh, curly arrow starts from the lone pair, starts from the lone pair. If the curly arrow starts from the bond, starts from the bond. Dia ada maksud dia sendiri. Bukan dia asal boleh je, dia nak terbang dari mana ke mana, dari jauh ke mana. Dia kena dekat sebab kita nak transfer. Okay then, we are going to take this. Okay, sekarang ni saya ajar awak step by step. But in uh, real answer, awak boleh sambung je terus. From this step, terus dia. Kalau nak attack lagi, kita attack lagi. Sambung kat bawah ni. Okay, sekarang ni saya asingkan dia. Okay. Awak oh, tak perlu pun nak buat one step, salin balik, one step tak perlu. Sambung je terus. Sambung guna arrow. Arrow ni. Nak tunjuk dia buat apa lepas tu. Okay. Okay ke? Okay, 
So the second step, we are going to form this carbocation. What is meant by this carbocation? Apa aim kita? Kita nak jadikan siapa sebagai carbocation? Uh, kita nak form cation kan? Cation ni positif atau negatif? Positif. Positif. So sekarang oksigen awak positif. Adakah towards the end awak nak oksigen awak juga positif? No. No, you want to form siapa positif? Carbon. Carbon. Okay, so now look at the nearest carbon now. You aim to have this carbon or this carbon or this carbon or this carbon to be the positive one. Okay, jadi sekarang ni during the second step, you are going to remove water. So how are you going to remove this water? This protonated alcohol ni, dia orang tak stabil sebab dia orang ada positive charge. Jadi kita akan removekan dia terus sebab bila kita removekan dia, dia akan jadi water molecule yang stabil. So tak ada masalah lah. That's why kita gives all the electrons on this bonding pair to this uh, oxygen and then you are going to have this water molecule dan juga carbocation in here. Awak ada carbocation dekat this carbon. Sebab kita remove dia, dia ni tinggal sikit kurang electrons. Okay and then for the next step awak boleh sambung eh. Ambil yang ni balik, salin balik. Okay tunggu. Uh, whenever you have this carbocation, you must check for the possibility for rearrangement to occur. Okay, rearrangement ni dia tak berlaku pada semua uh, compound. Awak baca kat bawah ni. This rearrangement, they only takes place when you have more than one intermediate species can be formed. In other words, if you have more than one product to be formed, akan ada possibilities untuk buat rearrangement. Tapi yang soal dari structure ni kita tahu ada tak lebih pada satu produk akan form? Kita dia ada satu produk je kita akan form tadi kita tunjuk awal tadi dekat general formula. Satu je. Satu je. Bila satu je perlu tak rearrangement? Tak perlu. Tak perlu. Okay. This rearrangement dia basically awak nak migrate, awak nak gerakkan sama ada hydride or methanide. Hydride adalah awak nak gerakkan hydrogen. Metanide awak nak gerakkan CH3. Awak nak gerakkan pada siapa? Daripada carbon atom adjacent. Adjacent maksudnya sebelah. Bukannya ke dekat carbon yang carbocate ion ni. Kita bukan nak buang hydrogen or um, uh, apa, metanide daripada carbon yang carbocate ion. Kita nak ambil daripada adjacent carbon sebelah dia. Okay, sebab tu nama dia 1, 2. Okay, one, two ni maksudnya bersebelahan. This is one, this is two. Tak kisahlah dia duduk kat karbon tengah ke, asalkan dia sebelah-sebelah, nama dia one, two. Okay, so from less stable to more stable. Kalau awak dah ada more stable, uh, the most stable carbocate ion, even though you have more than one product to be formed, you don't have to do this rearrangement. Rearrangement only takes place when you have less stable carbocate ion, then you have the possibility to form a more stable carbocate ion. Okay. Okay. okay, untuk kes ni kita perlu, kita tak perlu sebab apa carbocate ion kita sekarang ni classes of carbocate ion kita apa? This carbon attached to it we have three means what is the class of carbocate ion present in here? Tertiary. Tertiary carbocate ion. So dah paling stabil lah. So dah tak perlu buat apa-apa. Okay then, the last one, kita tak habis lagi sebab kita nak dapatkan alkenes. So now, you are going to form alkenes. When you want to form alkenes, means you are going to involve another carbon, means the adjacent carbon. Okay, kita nak buat double bond in between them, means we are going to eliminate another thing in here. Tadi kita dah eliminate one thing, the OH. Kita aim nak buang air, so another hydrogen kita akan remove from the adjacent carbon. So siapa yang nak ambil this adjacent hydrogen, uh, kita, siapa yang nak ambil this hydrogen? Mestilah electron rich species. Siapa electron rich species yang kita nak ambil? Ingat lagi tak during the first steps kita keluarkan HSO4 daripada H2SO4 kan? Yes, yes. And since since this is catalyst, catalyst akan regenerate it. So these reactions, they akan um, uh, this catalyst, they akan regenerate it, dapat balik H2SO4. Diorang tak being consumed tetapi diorang akan eat reactions. And once they take this hydrogen, the bond between carbon and hydrogen will be transferred to this, maksudnya these electrons on here will be transferred to this carbon and carbon, hence forming this carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, yang tu sahaja mekanism. Ada berapa steps? Ada 
three, three steps. Three steps. Okay. So ini three steps yang basic untuk dehydration of alcohol. Okay, sebelum kita habiskan kelas lima minit, saya nak tunjuk dehydration of alcohol juga yang melibatkan rearrangement. Okay, saya recall again. What is meant by this carbocation rearrangement? Carbocation rearrangement only needed when you bukan carbocation rearrangement. You must check whenever you have carbocation. Once dekat kita dapat je carbocation ion, tak kisahlah dalam mechanism dehydration, halogenation ke, hydration, tak kisah lepas ni pun. Ada carbocation ion, always check for rearrangement is possible or not. Okay. So rearrangement of a less stable to a more stable carbocation ion, kita buat ada dua cara. It's either you shift the hydrogen atom ataupun the alkyl group. If you shift the hydrogen atom, we call them as one, two hydride shift. Okay, so now given to you this carbocation of secondary sebab this carbocation attached to it will have one and two. So secondary carbocation. If you look at the adjacent carbon, we have hydrogen and methyl attached to it. This is for this example lah. Okay, so what, how do you know whether you want to form the one two hydride or one two methanide? Look at the adjacent carbon. If you have hydrogen on them, always go for one two hydride sheet. Okay, if you have hydrogen at least one or maybe two couple on them, always go for hydride shift. Ada hydrogen, hydride shift. Tak ada hydrogen, baru methanide shift. Walaupun awak ada metal here, go for hydride. Sebab kalau awak gerakkan dia, so apa bezanya dia dengan dia ni digerakkan? Tak ada beza secondary juga. Okay, jadi macam mana kita nak buat the shift, awak kena gerakkan. The uh, bond between carbon and hydrogen here, dia akan transfer to carbon tau, bukannya the bond. Kalau awak bagi dekat bond, dia dapat double bond. Sekarang ni kita nak gerakkan carbocation ion sahaja. So hydrogen ni nak gerak ke belah sana. So sebab itulah this bond, dia pointing towards carbon, not the bond. Okay, so once undergo one to hydride shift, you are going to get a new place of this carbocation ion. Now around this carbocation ion, you have one, two and three alkyl group attached to it. So this is a more stable carbocation ion. Ingat, rearrangement of carbocation ion involves only uh, less stable to more stable and then kalau nak go for hydride shift, the other je hydrogen at adjacent carbon, confirm the hydride shift. Okay, meanwhile for one to methanide, you initially got the secondary carbocation ion. Your adjacent carbon got only metal on them. Tak ada langsung hydrogen. Jadi memang dia akan go for methanide shift. Again, gerakkan this bond kepada carbon bukannya bond. Dan sekarang dapatlah this tertiary carbocation ion with greater stability. Okay eh? Okay, hari tu kita dah masuk 5.2 right? And we stop until here is it? The carbocation ion rearrangement. Can I recall can we recall together how many reactions taking place when we want to prepare an alkene? Ada berapa reactions terlibat dalam preparations of alkene? Two. Two. What are they? Dehydration of alcohol and dehydrohalogenation of haloalkene. Okay, good. Thank you. Can I know? For preparations of alkene, what kind of reactions is taking place? Out of the four reactions, we have substitution, addition, elimination and rearrangement. Which of these yang akan belongs to the uh, reaction? Uh, dua. Ah, yang mana? Okay, dua. Dehydrogen. Yes. Dehydrogen. Okay, itu adalah reaction, name of reaction. Now I'm asking, type of reaction, substitutions, addition, uh, rearrangement or eliminations untuk preparations of alkene? Elimination. Eliminations. Both elimination. walaupun dehydrohalogenation ataupun dehydrations, they involve only eliminations from single bond to become multiple bond. Okay, good. And then out of the two reactions, dehydrohalogenations and dehydrations, dehydra rehydrations, which one of them yang akan kita involve mechanism? Antara dua tu, siapa yang ada mekanism? Dehydration or dehydrohalogenation? Dehydration. Good. Dehydration must start from alcohol. Start with alcohol, you first from the protonated alcohol and then kita remove OH and then nanti kita masukkan sejajar lain. So dapatlah nanti tu mekanism dia lah, saya tak ulang dah. Untuk hari ni, kita akan buat um, Kita akan buat, eh sorry, 
Ini saya dah, 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 dah tunjuk air tu. Still dehydration of alcohol tetapi kali ini saya nak tunjuk example number two when you are going to form more than one product of alkenes. Okay, how are you going to determine whether you are going to form one product or more product? More than one product. Macam mana kita nak tahu? Um, alkohol awak tu boleh bagi lebih pada satu produk. Kita nak check dia punya apa? Boleh nak buat alkin, carbon-carbon double bond. Kita akan melibatkan dua carbon, is it? Yes. Bila dua carbon, awak ada possibility nak buat carbon-carbon double bond kat sini, buat carbon-carbon double bond kat sini, buat carbon-carbon bond dekat sini. Okay, apa yang membezakan antara produk-produk tu adalah stability of your alkene. The more stable will become the major product. The less stable will become the minor product. So can I know what is the name of the rule that we're going to use to determine the stability of alkene increases or decreases. Kita guna apa nama rules yang kita dah belajar? Sezaf rule. Yeah, Sezaf rule states, apa dia? Dia kata, highly substituted alkene will be the one that is most stable. Maksudnya, keliling alkene tu, the carbon-carbon double bond, berapa banyak alkyl group attached to it. Okay, macam mana nak tahu you can form more than pro one product of alkene? If you form double bond here by removing hydrogen and also OH, you're going to have two alkyl group attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. Itu yang pertama. If you form carbon-carbon double bond between this carbon and this carbon, okay, maksudnya you ada rearrangement of something nanti, okay, kita akan dapat double bond kat sini, keliling dia ada berapa? Satu dan dua juga. Okay, satu dan dua. So, sama. Okay, lepas tu apa lagi? Kalau carbon-carbon double bond dekat sini, awak akan ada satu, dua dan berkemungkinan tiga. Ha, tu yang kita nak tengok lah. More than one product to be formed. But then, when dealing with dehydration of alcohol, the reagents is still the same. With this concentrated H2SO4 and heat, you gonna form from alcohol to become alkene. So, we have two possibilities in here. Okay, usually kita akan melibatkan adjacent carbon lah antara kat sini ataupun dekat sini. Kalau kat bawah ni dia punya environment sama. Sama dengan lagi satu. Okay. Dan dia agak jauh. Dia kata kena tengok ayat adjacent. Now, when you have the possibility to form the more than one alkene means there are possibility to uh, do the rearrangement as well. Rearrangement bila kita buat? Kalau awak ada prime secondary, secondary carbocation ion And then kalau awak nak rearrange, dia akan dapat primary. Saya nak tanya, perlu tak rearrangement steps from secondary to primary? Tak. Tak perlu sebab rearrangement only happen when you want to form more stable carbocation ion. Kalau makin jadi tak stable, tak perlu buat rearrangement, okay? Ada berapa jenis rearrangement yang kita belajar? How many types of rearrangement that you learnt? The carbocation ion rearrangement tu? Ada berapa jenis? Dua. Dua. What are they? The first one kita ada shift apa nama dia? Hydride. Okay. Hydride saja gerakkan H. Bila nak sebut shift, kena guna 1-2 hydride shift. Means the 1-2 not necessarily belongs to carbon number 1 and 2 but they are next to each other. 1-2 dia gerakkan dari sini pergi sana. Dari sini pergi sana. So we have 1-2 hydride shift. Uh, shift. Sorry. We have 1-2 methanide shift. Okay. Macam mana nak tahu hydride or methanide? If you got hydrogen on the carbon that you want to do the shift, always go for hydride shift. If you got none of hydrogen uh, attached to your carbon yang to be shifted, go for methanide then. Ada hydrogen, confirm hydride shift sebab it is much easier to uh, transfer hydrogen instead of the methanide with bigger groups. Okay, so sekarang ni kita akan tengok antara dua ni. So by using Shazaf's rule, who do you think gonna have the most stable alkene? The highly substituted alkene belongs to 2-methyl-2-butene or 2-methyl-1-butene. According to Shizaf's rule, dia akan bagi major product. Siapa jadi major product? Atas ke bawah? Atas. Apa atas? Highly substituted. Highly substituted alkene with how many alkyl group attached to the carbon-carbon double bond? Three. 
three, one, two, and three. For this one, you think we got only one and two. Okay, major product adalah yang atas. Yang bawah kita panggil minor product sebab you got only two alkyl group attached to your carbon-carbon double bond. When you are going to show the mechanism, we'll do only for one major product. Tak perlu nak tunjuk dua-dua. Only go for major product. Tapi kena ikutlah step by steps. Okay, the steps will be the same as in the one that form only one alkene. Tetapi akan ada penambahan bila buat carbocation ion. When you have carbocation ion, if there is possibility for rearrangement, then do the rearrangement before you attack the nuclear file. Okay. So we first start with these steps. You first have this as your nuclear file and this H2SO4, the acid catalyst, as your electrophile. So this lone pair will attack the hydrogen. Okay, and then the bond between hydrogen and oxygen will break. Okay, you form this O negative here. HSO4, the O negative, the lone pair belongs to oxygen. So HSO4 minus. What's left here, you have OH2 positive. You initially got OH only. Once you add hydrogen, means they will become electron deficient. So this is what we call our protonated alcohol. So this is the first step. Okay, for the second step, okay, untuk um, start by the alkene ni, kalau free radical, kena buat step 1, step 2, step 3, emak okay, asyasing. Kalau yang ni, saya tekankan balik, you can simply um, resume from here, terus buat. Untuk second step, terus turun bawah ni, boleh. Ni, okay, ataupun ke kanan ke. Tak perlu nak buat asyasing macam saya buat ni eh. So, kita ambil balik your protonated alcohol. Now, you want to form carbocation ion. Maksud formations of carbocation ion, instead of oxygen got the positive charge, we want to form the carbon to become positive charge. So the nearest carbon here is the one that bear this OH2. So during this step, in order for you to get the carbon as positive charge, you're going to remove this whole thing of water molecule. Okay, so kita akan remove water molecule left with only this carbon as positive charge. Okay, at the moment, this carbon hold two hydrogens and one alkyl group attached to it. So at the moment, can I know what is the stability of this carbocation ion? They are methyl, primary, secondary or tertiary. What is the stability of your carbocation ion now? They belongs to which uh, class? Primary. Primary. So this is a primary carbocation ion. Do you think there are possibility to form a more stable carbocation ion? Look at the adjacent carbon here. Okay, look, kita ada carbon kat sini. Kalau kita gerakkan, kita akan melibatkan one, two shift. Tapi what kind of shift? Look at this carbon. They have hydrogen, they have CH3. Can, do, can they do rearrangement in order to get a more stable carbocation ion? Boleh tak? Dia buat rearrangement. Bila ada carbocation ion, look for the possibility to rearrange them. Now, look at your adjacent carbon, the next carbon attached to this carbocation ion. They hold this hydrogen and also methyl. Okay, faham ke? Faham, yes. Check if there is possibility to form a more stable carbocation ion. Initially, you got primary. If you do the rearrangement, will they, have, will they get a more stable or less stable carbocation ion? More stable. More stable. more stable. I know kalau more stable, kalau kita gerakkan, kita akan dapat what kind of carbocation ion from primary to become? Tertiary. Tertiary. Can okay. I know out of the two high, uh, out of the two rearrangement that involving carbocation ion, siapa yang kita akan buat dalam kes ni? Hydride or methanide? Sorry? Hydride. Okay, why you choose hydride instead of methanide? Presence of H. Uh, yes, presence hydrogen. of H and it is much easier to uh, to relocate this hydrogen in, instead of this big group of CH3. Jadi kita akan buat hydride shift. Ingat yang bergerak tu adalah hydride means the whole bond between carbon and hydrogen will be relocated to this carbocation ion. And then this carbocation ion will be transferred to this carbon. Hence you will get this tertiary carbocation ion. Okay, kita buat daripada sini, gerakkan bukan bagi pada bond. Kalau bagi pada bond, dapat double bond. Gerak bagi kepada C. So, lukisan tu bagi luas sikit, besar sikit. Okay, and then this positive charge akan transfer kepada carbon ni. Hydrogen ni instead of ada dua, dapat tiga. So, we now have tertiary carbocation ion because we have three alkyl group attached to it. 
So this is a much stable carbocation. Starting from this carbocation, barulah kita proceed to the next steps. Okay, the next steps now, kita akan form alkene. Okay, when you have your carbocation in here, so you have a few num a few possibilities, more than one, to form your alkene. So this carbocation now, kita dalam keadaan kekurangan. Okay, apa yang kita nak buat sekarang, kita look for the adjacent carbon. It can be here, it can be here, and it can be here as well. Okay, antara keliling dia lah, siapa. Bila nak buat alkene, kita akan buat double bond. Means you're going to eliminate. Kita nak eliminate another hydrogen. Sebab kita nak buang alkohol, eh, kita nak buang air, tadi dah buang OH, tinggal hydrogen. Hydrogen datang pada adjacent carbon, not on the carbocation itself. Okay, jadi, kita akan fokus pada major product. Kalau awak remove from this hydrogen, you will get minor product, Z. Kalau awak buang hydrogen ni, dapat double bond dekat satu dengan dua kan? Ya. Yeah. Jadi minor. Okay, kita nak major. Kalau remove kat sini pun sama dia punya environment. Jadi, kita akan remove dari this hydrogen. Okay, what will happen during this formations of alkene? Okay, one of the lone pair from the nucleophile. Your nucleophile is basically your HSO4 you generate uh, during the first steps. They are the catalyst. So this catalyst of H2SO4 will regenerate it. And then once the hydrogen being taken, this bond between the carbon and hydrogen will be transferred to this single bond. Bila bond bagi bond, dapatlah multiple bond macam ni. That's how you get your major product. Okay, clear? So, dapat balik awak punya acid catalyst. Catalyst kita tak consume during a reaction. They just eat the reaction. Can I proceed class? Yes. Yes. Okay. Major product. Okay, now. Tadi kita dah settle untuk preparation of alkene. The rules to apply when you have prepared, uh, you have prepared an alkene. How to determine the major and minor product. Now. We have another rules to apply in alkenes called Makarnikov rules. Okay, Makarnikov rules, dia berlaku pada reactions of alkene. Shazam's rule pada preparations of alkene. Now, Makarnikov rules berlaku pada alkene baru nak buat reactions. Okay, apa yang Makarnikov rules ni cakap? Makarnikov rules states that in additions of hydrogen and X, this X belongs to halogen. In other words, hydrohalogenations to an alkene. Daripada alkene, kita nak tambah H dengan Cl contohnya. Nak tambah H dengan Br. Nak tambah H dengan F contoh eh. Okay. We have the possibilities whether this hydrogen will be added to this carbon or this carbon lah. Okay, kita ada dua possibility. Tak tahu yang mana. Maka Nikov cakap, hydrogen will be added to the carbon atom with double uh, of the double bond that already has a greater number of hydrogen atoms. So looks at this carbon between carbon number one and carbon number two. Who's got greater number of hydrogens? Carbon number one or carbon number two? Carbon number one or carbon, carbon number two? Carbon number two. Huh? There are more hydrogen ni. Yang carbon bukannya tengok keliling ni siapa? Yang directly attached to this carbon between carbon-carbon double bond ni. This carbon, carbon you got two hydrogens. Two. This carbon, you got only one hydrogen. Bukannya total up yang carbon orang lain. Dekat dia sahaja. Yang terlibat sekarang dekat double bond. Carbon number two. This is carbon number one. This is carbon number two. Who's got greater number of hydrogen? Number one. Carbon number one got two hydrogens. Carbon number two got one hydrogen. Carbon number three that is not even as part of our alkene here got three hydrogen. So kita tak akan tengok carbon hydrogen dekat carbon ni. Kita akan tengok carbon-carbon double bond sahaja. Because we want to perform addition reaction, we want to add one here and one here. But according to Makarnikov rules, when you have selections between hydrogen and halogen, the hydrogen will be added to the carbon with most number of hydrogen. So in this case, the first or second carbon got more hydrogen on them. The first one. The first one means the hydrogens will be added to the CH2 while the X will be added to second or first? First. 
First dah masuk hidrogen. Kalau dah masuk hidrogen kat sini, dah ada part bond. Bond ni dah pecah. Boleh ke masuk jadi lima bond? Carbon? Tak. Tak boleh. Jadi dia masuk carbon nombor berapa? Satu ke dua? Dua. Nombor dua. So X akan masuk dekat carbon number two. Maka ni kau senang je. Hydrogen will be added to greater number of carbon, ah hydrogen with, sorry, carbon with greater number of hydrogen. Okay. So nanti dapatlah macam ni. CH3, CH ada kita punya halogen. Okay now. So bear in mind the uh, McConaughey rules. Kita hanya akan apply whenever it states follow McConaughey rules. Kalau dia kata anti McConaughey sebaliknya. Right. Dia bukanlah semata-mata um, halogen. Dia boleh jadi OH ke dia depend. So tengok dekat rules yang mana. Okay this hydro 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 hydrogenations. Hydrogenations means sebab kita ada alkene, the only reactions taking place is addition. Bukan the only, sorry. Kita akan pecah kepada dua. One is additions, another one is oxidations. Ha, sekarang ni kita tengah cater for addition. Kita simply nak demolish the multiple bond, become only the single bond by adding the things. Okay, bila melibatkan alkene, melibatkan dua carbon, jadi yang nak masuk pun dua benda. Tak boleh masuk satu sahaja, nanti tak stable. Okay, hydrogenations means you want to add hydrogen. Your hydrogen must be H2. So we want to add hydrogen and hydrogen. You, so you initially starts from alkene with the presence of catalyst, platinum, palladium or nickel. Okay, kita akan dapat this kind of product. You simply add hydrogen gas. Okay. Dan dia masuk dekat karbon yang terlibat sahaja. Dia bukan masuk dekat semua karbon. Boleh ke kelas? Kena hafal reaction ni. Jangan tulis H2 dekat atas arrow. H2 is the reagent. So H2 will become the reagent tulis kat tepi ni. The one dekat atas ni hanyalah dia punya condition. Hmm. Okay the second one you start with this alkene. You want to add water. Hydration means addition of water. So we have these selections between hydrogen and OH. So you are going, dia takkan tahu follow makanan kopi tak. Ini saya yang tahu. Bila water, hydrogen akan masuk dekat part yang banyak, kar, yang carbon yang banyak hydrogen. Which in this case the first one. OH akan bertindak macam tadilah, macam follow makanan kopi tu. Dia akan masuk carbon with less hydrogen. With the presence of acid. Okay, with the presence of acid. So H2O kena ada H plus ke, strong acid ke, ataupun H2O plus kita terima. Ini adalah conditions dia. So nanti kita akan dapat alkohol. Daripada alkin nak jadi alkohol, kita panggil hydrations. Yang tadi kita belajar untuk jadi alkin dari alkohol, kita panggil dehydration. Hydrations tambah air, dehydrations buang air. Okay. And for alkene, we have another mechanism in here. We have these hydrations. Tadi, dehydrations, now hydrations. Okay, next. We have halogenations in inert solvent. Halogenations means you want to add halogen. Halogen is the most stable as diatomic molecules. Means we are going to start with these diatomic molecules to be added to the double bond. Means both halogen akan ditambah. With the presence of inert solvent. Inert solvent dia takkan termasuk dalam awak punya selection. Tapi bila kita gunakan polar solvent, contohnya water, awak akan ada selections. Selain daripada X, kita akan masukkan OH juga daripada water. Ha, yang kiranya dua-dua ni dia sama cuma apa yang masuk. Okay, halogenations, you start with this alkene. We add with, let's say you have Cl2. This is an example of inert solvent. They can also be CH, CH3Cl boleh, CHCl3 boleh, dia boleh CCl4 juga. The inert solvent lah. Okay, so with the presence of this inert solvent, you're going to add Cl at both carbons involved in this carbon-carbon double bond. Tak kisahlah banyak hydrogen ke tak sebab species yang sama dia nak masuk. And then we have this halogenations in water. We know halogenations, we want to add halogen. But instead of both halogens to be added to the carbon-carbon double bond, we are going to add one halogen to the carbon. Another one carbon will be added 
OH. Okay, kita akan ambil OH daripada water sebab water adalah polar molecules. Bila polar molecule dia bukan inert solvent, dia akan terlibat juga dalam reactions tu. Dia akan tertarik juga untuk contribute. So macam dalam halogenation in water, satu kita masuk kita punya X, satu lagi masuk OH. Kenapa dia tak ambil H instead of OH? Dia ambil OH sebab C sekarang nanti bila ni pecah, dia jadi positive charge. Dia akan tertarik pada negatif iaitu OH. Kalau dia tarik pada H, dia adalah positif-positif. Dia tak akan tertarik lah sebab dia sama charge. So, nanti kita tengok um, bila awak ada pilihan antara Cl dengan OH, Cl ni akan bertindak macam H dalam Makronikov. Dia akan pergi pada carbon with the most number of hydrogens. Just like in this example, while the OH will be the one yang akan pergi pada carbon with less number of hydrogens. Okay, the fifth reaction, we have hydrohalogenation. Means you want to add hydrogen together with halogen. Satu tambah H, satu tambah X. Okay, and this hydrohalogenation is another mechanism that you need to know for this alkene. So, altogether dah berapa uh, mechanism yang awak kena belajar dalam alkene sahaja? Berapa dah kita kena belajar? Dalam preparation ada jumpa tak mechanism? Ada tak reactions uh, mechanism dalam preparation of alkene? Ada. Ada satu kan? Dalam alkene sekarang kita yes, dah belajar berapa? Dah, saya jumpa berapa tadi? Kita jumpa berapa dah saya tulis? Tiga. Dua dah lah. Dalam alkene ada dua. So eh, dalam sorry, reaction of alkene ada dua, preparation dah ada satu. So tiga. Daripada alkene saja tiga. Lepas tu alkene ada satu free radical. Untuk chapter five kita ada empat mekanism yang awak kena tahu. Okay. Right. So kita ada alkene nak tambah ni tuan tu. Hydro hydrogenation kita adalah HCl. Kalau dia tak sila buat apa-apa, assume inert solvent. Kalau dia tak guna solvent lain, dia bagi tahu pola ke tak. Tapi selalunya kalau tak bagi tahu dia adalah inert solvent. So this hydrogen akan added to carbon with the most number of hydrogens while the Cl will be added to the carbon with less number of hydrogen. Sini ada dua, sini ada satu. Sebab tu dia masuk kat sini. Okay, there's also hydrohalogenation. Tadi hydrohalogenation ada dua. Satu inert solvent, satu polar solvent. Hydrohalogenation pun ada dua. Satu inert solvent that follow McConnell rule. Satu lagi, kita tak panggil lah inert solvent tapi dia dalam hydrogen peroxide. Maksudnya peroxide species. Okay. When you have hydrohalogenations and in the presence of hydrogen peroxide or acid peroxide, okay, dia automatic akan follow anti-Makonikov rules. Kalau Makonikov cakap hydrogen masuk dekat carbon with the most number of hydrogen, kalau anti-Makonikov dia terbalik. Hydrogen will be added to the carbon with less number of hydrogens. Got it? Follow and anti. Okay. anti yes, makanikov yes. hanya berlaku pada hydrohalogenation in peroxide species. Okay, let's look at the peroxide species. Dia ada dua jenis. Kalau disebut hydrogen peroxide, dia sama ada tulis H2O2 ataupun HOOH. So, kalau ikut structure formula dia macam ni, HOOH. Kalau kita kata acid peroxide, so mungkin dia akan melibatkan alkyl group juga. So, dia ada... Um, alkyl group atau ada OO, something macam tu. Kadang-kadang dia sebut peroxide. Kalau tak sebut peroxide, tengok structure dia macam mana. Usually, dia akan berlaku pada HBr sebab HBr sangat selektif. Okay. HCl ni jarang lah. Unless stated guna peroxide, barulah kita buat anti-makronikov. But usually, anti-makronikov ni bila ada peroxide, berlaku pada HBr. So, nampaklah produk dia terbalik. Kadang-kadang soalan dia bagi awak produk apa, dia minta awak suggest nak guna uh, conditions apa. Kalau awak tengok kat sini banyak hidrogen tapi yang masuknya Cl, kita boleh suggest dia adalah hidrogen peroxide or acid peroxide. Dan D, do not follow McConnell rules. Okay, untuk reaction of alkene, tadi ada berapa reaction untuk addition sahaja? Enam. Reaction of alkene ada dua jenis. Satu addition, satu oxidation. Yang saya tengah tunjuk sekarang addition. Kenapa addition? Dari multiple bond jadi single bond. Addition pula kita ada berapa jenis? Dua, eukofilik dengan elektrofilik. 
dalam case addition ni electrophilic or nucleophilic additions taking place in alkene? Nucleophilic Additions of alkene daripada multiple bond jadi single bond. Okay, itu addition. Antara H2 dengan double bond, carbon-carbon double bond, siapa nukofal? Alkene ke H2? Alkene. Alkene will be the nukofal. Now look at your product. Siapa yang kita add? Alkene ke hydrogen yang kita add? Hydrogen. Hydrogen is the electrophile or nucleophile? Electrophile. Means this reaction taking place is electrophilic additions or nucleophilic addition? Electrophilic addition. Electrophile being added. That's what we call electrophilic additions. Awak kena tahu electrophilic additions berlaku pada compound jenis apa. Dia bukannya ikut dan. Electrophilic additions hanya berlaku pada alkene. Nucleophilic additions berlaku pada haloalkin. Ha, jadi kena tahu spesies apa yang terlibat baru kita tahu type of reactions. Type of reactions is very important to know. Memang itu adalah soalan yang paling ditanya. Dia takkan tanya name of reaction. Dia tak tanya hydrogenation ke hydrogenations. Dia tanya type of reactions. Bila tak tahu type of reaction, tak tahulah produk apa nak dapat, is it? Yang saya tunjuk sampai 6 ni semuanya adalah electrophilic addition, addition only. So ada berapa semua total addition reactions dalam alkene? For now? 6. 6. Elimination ada berapa? 2. 2. Okay good. Dah berapa total reactions kita belajar untuk alkene so far? 8. 8. Dalam 8 ni berapa dah berapa mekanisme yang kita akan belajar? Dalam 8. 3. 3. Yeah. Satu dah belajar dalam preparation of alkene. Okay sekarang ni kita nak belajar yang lagi dua dalam alkene additions reactions in alkene. So the first one is hydrations. Hydrations you want to add hydrogen uh, hydrogen and OH. H dengan OH water lah. Okay, so this is the general formula, a uh, general reactions awak. Whenever you are asked about mechanism, first you need to write the general reactions. Then only you can start with your mechanism. You have this alkene to react with water with the presence of acid, strong acid. Then only you can form your product of alcohol. Bila tambah water, kita akan dapat alcohol. So how are we going to get from this to this? kita akan go into a series of steps. Okay, mechanism here. The first steps involve the formations of carbocation. Means your aim through this step, you want to form carbon with positive charge. At the moment, okay, tadi tu general kita kan. So, between these two, siapa yang lebih electrophilic? The neutral charge or positive charge? Siapa yang lebih tak stabil? Neutral or positive charge? Positive charge. Oh, yeah. Dia lagi tak stabil. So kita akan first, during the first step, kita akan react dulu H2O plus dengan your alkene. This H2O plus will be the electrophile because they got positive charge, less electron in them. This double bond between carbon and carbon will be the nucleophilic site. So during these steps, the bond between this carbon and carbon, one of them will break to take up this one hydrogen from the H2O plus. And then once this hydrogen is taken, Means one of the carbon will be the positive charge. Maksudnya carbocation. Yang H ni pula dengan O, kita akan break tinggallah dia water molecule. Okay, now by applying, what is the name of the rules we're going to apply when we want to add H and other species? Kita panggil apa nama rule tu bila awak perlu buat pilihan nak masuk kat mana? Makonikov. Okay, Makonikov. Now you want to take in the hydrogen. The hydrogen since it states here follow Makarnikov rules, these hydrogens to be added will be added to the first carbon or the second carbon. The hydrogen here akan pergi dekat first carbon or second carbon. Look at the how many carbons attached to this carbon. Hydrogen that attached to this carbon. Hydrogen nak masuk mana? Carbon nombor satu ke carbon nombor dua? Satu. Carbon nombor satu sebab 
Yes, more hydrogen. Yes, more hydrogen on the carbon. Jadi, kita akan dapat hydrogen dekat atas ni. Means, species uh, carbon yang tak dapat apa-apa, dia akan jadi the carbocate ion, is it? Yes, yes. Okay, now you have formed your tertiary carbocate ion. Whenever you have carbocate ion, you must check for the possibility to do the rearrangement. Do you need a rearrangement for this tertiary carbocate ion? Do you need to do sort of arrange, rearrangement in here since you already have this tertiary carbocate ion? No. No, because you already have the most stable carbocate ion, kan? Okay. It is not yeah. necessary for you to do rearrangement each and every time you form the carbocate ion. Only if there is possibility to form a more stable carbocate ion, then proceed with the hydride or methane sheath. If not, you can simply proceed to the next steps. Okay, the next steps by having this carbocate ion, the tertiary carbocate ion, kita akan form protonated alcohol. How are we going to form protonated alcohol? Means your alcohol OH got positive charge on them. The O got positive. So, macam mana kita nak buat? We know we have water molecule and another water molecule released in here. Kita akan ambil one of the water molecule to be the nucleophile. Now, this water molecule will be the nucleophile. This carbocate ion will be electrophile. So, the directions of arrow is from carbon to oxygen or oxygen to carbon. The curly arrow will pointing towards carbon or towards oxygen? Oxygen carbon. to carbon. Oxygen to carbon because the oxygen now is a nucleophile. On your nucleophile, you have got this nucleophilic site. You got extra electron to be donated to this electrophilic site with less electron on them. So pointing towards this, Allah sorry, the pointing towards this carbon. Make sure the lone pair to this carbon means you're gonna form another bond in here between carbon and oxygen. So by having this carbon and oxygen bond means the uh, the electron surrounding this oxygen gonna be two, four, six, eight still. Of that, but then the valence electron now is one, two, three, four, five. Instead of six, they got only five. That's why they got positive charge on your oxygen. By having this oxygen with positive charge, this is what we call your protonated alcohol. During these steps, you aim to form this protonated alcohol. Okay, so start um proceed with this protonated alcohol. Kita akan buat the steps number three. So you want to form only the alcohol. At the moment, you have this protonated alcohol, unstable species. So what are you going to do? You have another water molecule. The water molecule now will become the nucleophile or electrophile. This water molecule will be the nucleophile or electrophile if you compare it to this um, protonated alcohol. Siapa yang lebih negatif? Water molecule. Water molecule will be the? Nucleophile. Nucleophile means the point the the curly arrow will point it towards um protonated alcohol or water. Properly. Towards protonated alcohol. Yes, alcohol. protonated alcohol. Starting from the nucleophilic side here on this lone pair, pointing towards the hydrogen. Okay, bukan the O. Eh? Memang betul O yang ada positive charge. But then kita sekarang nak keep this OH. Okay, this OH lah. Let's say OH sebab kita nak form uh, alcohol. So, instead of pergi attack O, kita attack H. But then, the bond between O dengan H yang akan kita breaks to form the alcohol. Okay, nampak tak? Macam mana dapat benda ni? Boleh ke? Attack ambil H, bond between them breaks, gives all the electron to this oxygen. That's why you have two lone pair on here instead of one in here. Because the two electrons comes from the bonding electron just now you have broken here. And lastly, you will regenerate your acid catalyst, right? Kan tadi kita ada H3O plus as your acid catalyst. Dapatlah balik. Boleh? Boleh ke kelas? Boleh. Okay, so tunjuk untuk major product sahaja. Tak perlu tunjuk untuk um, minor product if any. Tapi dalam general reactions, kena tunjuk uh, product major and minor kalau ada. Okay, the third mechanism that you're going to learn is the mechanism regarding hydrohalogenations. You want to add hydrogen, you want to add halogens. Hydrogen and halogens 
at which carbon they're going to follow the mechanical rule means hydrogen will be added to the carbon with the most number of hydrogens while halogens will be added to the carbon with less number of hydrogens so we'll start with the uh, double bond again but now your hydrohalogenation involve hbr let's see and with inert solvent eh bila dia tak cakap kita assume the inert solvent Okay, bila dia ada kat sini inert solvent, dia tak kacau lah memang apa yang orang masukkan, itu yang dia masuk. So, this hydrogen will be added to this carbon. That's why you got this hydrogen in here. And then the Br will be added to the carbon with less number of hydrogen. Less ni maksudnya boleh ada, boleh ada, tak ada juga. Tapi kurang daripada yang satu lagi. Okay, kita tak ada possibility lain untuk add this carbon. Okay, now, sebab dia punya environment sama. CH3, CH3, CH3. Kalau dia ada possibility lain, berkemungkinan awak boleh ada rearrangement of carbocation ion untuk dapatkan yang lagi stabil. Dari segi carbocation ion apalah, primary, secondary or tertiary. Okay. Even though the reactions taking place is still electrophilic additions but then the mechanism might be a bit different to one another dengan hydro hydrations tadi sebab melibatkan species yang berbeza untuk masuk dia punya reactivity pun berbeza. Always starts with your double bond and then here we have HBr. Tadi kita ada catalyst. Dalam ni kita tak ada catalyst, simply inert solvent yang jadi the medium. Okay sebab tu kita terus start dengan HBr. Who gonna be the nucleophile? Alkene or HBr? Siapa akan jadi nucleophile yang kaya dengan elektron? Alkene or HBr? Alkene. Alkene. So alkene, the nucleophilic site is on this carbon-carbon double bond and here this HBr, the nucleophilic site is the H. Okay, jadi kita akan take one of the hydrogen and then breaks the bond between H and Br. You're going to form your tertiary carbocation together with this Br minus. Now, is there any uh, need to form a more stable carbocation instead of this tertiary carbocation you have formed ni? Perlu tak kita nak dapatkan yang lagi stabil? No. Tak, tak perlu. Jadi rearrangement tak payah. Terus proceed dengan second step. Having this tertiary carbocation ion, you want to add Br, right? Sebab kita nak masukkan halogen pula. Hydrogen dah masuk, sekarang nak masukkan halogen. So this Br now act as a nucleophile with electron rich uh, um, nature. You want to add um, this one of the lone pair to form a bond with this carbon. Maksudnya dia akan attack this electrophilic site on this carbon, carbocation ion. Jadi dia akan attack kat carbon. Dia tak akan buang apa-apa sebab dia memang nak tambah sahaja. So dapatlah BR dekat sini. So uh, mechanism for hydrohalogenation is quite straightforward. You simply add hydrogen then you add BR. Kalau hydrogen sahaja, you first uh, take up the hydrogen, then you form the protonated alcohol, then only you can form the alcohol by removing the one of the hydrogens on your protonated alcohol. Uh, there are three steps. Hydrations, three steps. Hydrohalogenations, two steps. Tapi, yang ni tak ada rearrangement. Kalau ada rearrangement, kena tambah another steps lah dekat sini. Jangan attack dulu baru rearrange, no. Dapat carbocate ion rearrange dulu baru boleh attack. Itu pun ikut keperluan. Kalau per, boleh lagi stabil. Kalau dah paling stabil dah tak perlu. Apart from having additions reactions in your alkene, we also have another reactions. Okay, tapi reactions ni dia bukanlah kata tak ada melibatkan addition. No. Okay, bila kita sebut oxidative cleavage of alkene, dia melibatkan more than one basic reaction. Mungkin dia ada campuran, mula dia add Lepas tu dia eliminate tu contoh dia. Ah, Memula dia eliminate, lepas tu dia add. Okay, jadi dia tak termasuk dalam line addition, substitution, um, nuke, um, rearrangement ataupun elimination. Dia adalah campuran. So kita asingkan dia. Kita ada elimination, kita ada addition. Also we have this oxidative cleavage. They belongs to oxidation. And tu faham ke? Sebab tu saya pecahkan dia tiga macam ni. Oxidative cleavage ni dia buat oxidation. Dia adalah campuran elimination dan any other reactions lah yang basic tu. Tapi dia bukanlah whole solely addition sahaja. Faham? Faham, Miss. Okay. Now, 
the starting material is still the same, the alkene. So alkene with carbon-carbon double bond. Now, for the first oxidative cleavage of alkene, we're going to react them with hot acidified chemical form, the potassium permanganate. So how are we going to write the reagent? You have this permanganate with the presence of acid catalyst. Then you have heat down here. So chemical form, H plus, heat. Chemical form, comma, jangan buat dash. Comma. Ataupun jangan buat macam hyphen ke apa. Com terminal 4, comma H. Comma here means at the same time, they react together. Kalau ada nombor, dia melibatkan, kena buat satu dulu, baru dua. Okay. Kalau comma, kekalkan comma. They are happening all at once. And then with the presence of heat. Okay, bukan reflux. Terminal 4, H plus heat, maksudnya reactions with hot acidified terminal 4. So reactions with hot acidified terminal 4, apa yang awak akan dapat? Okay, you're going to involve these steps. Dia bukan mekanism. Cuma nak dapatkan produk, kena buat cara ni. Baru tahu produk apa kita dapat. Bila kita sebut cleavage, means you are going to cleave bond. Bond apa? Bond pada alkin. Tadi kita belajar homo and hetero involving only single bond. But now, in oxidative cleavage, we are going to cleave these two bonds together. So, uh, first we need to cleave this bond between carbon and carbon. Maksudnya, dia akan terpecah. Carbon da masih double bond tapi tak ada apa-apa tepi ni. Carbon masih double bond. Okay, now the product to be formed will depends on how many hydrogen attached to each of this carbon. Okay, kita kena tengok berapa banyak hydrogen attached pada each carbon. For this carbon on the left, do you have any hydrogen attached to it? Once no. they are if they are no longer uh, um, a compound. So kita dah pecah jadi dua compound lah. Okay, carbon yang kiri kita tak ada hydrogen. If there's no hydrogen attached to this carbon double bond, but at the carbon yang carbon-carbon double bond tu, means you're going to form ketone. Do you still remember how does your uh, how does ketone looks like? Ketone. Kena ada carbonyl group attached to it adalah carbon, right? So bila tak ada hydrogen, kita dapat ketone. Okay, lepas tu apa lagi? Kalau you have one hydrogen on your carbon, means you're going to form carboxylic acid. Okay, macam mana dapat ni? Don't bother with the mechanism. Ingat je apa dia akan jadi. Kalau you ada two hydrogen attached to it, dia terus akan jadi CO2 and water. Got it? Faham ke? First, kena cleave the bond, tengok berapa banyak hydrogen attached to it, baru tahu produk apa. So, dalam kes ni, carbon on the left, they gonna form apa? Tak ada hydrogen. Ketone. Ketone. So, this gonna be your ketone. You simply cleave, you insert oxygen. Tu je yang awak buat. Cleave, simply insert oxygen and then look at your other bonds. Ada tak hydrogen? Kalau tak ada hydrogen, dapat ketone. So, ada carbonyl group. What about this one? You cleave and then you insert oxygen. Tetapi, when you have one hydrogen adalah si, uh, dia buat reaction apa? From this uh, chemical form, you're going to add the oxygen. So, dekat hydrogen, kita akan letakkan O. Sebab tu dapat carboxylic acid. Boleh? Boleh, Miss. Kalau dua-dua hydrogen, kita dapat apa? CO2 and H2O. Ya, yeah, CO2 and H2O. Okay, good. And then, Selain daripada oxidative cleavage melibatkan chemical for heat chem ah uh, sorry hot acidified chemical for you gonna have reactions involving ozonolysis ozonolysis first kita react dengan ozon and then kita akan react with zinc in water okay nampak tak tadi kita guna comma je now kita letak nombor bila ada nombor kena letak nombor bukan dash bukannya tak ada nombor nombor main keberanian maksudnya first reactions berlaku dengan dia ni habis dia orang buat reaction baru dia buat reaction dengan dia ni pula Okay, so this is how you write your reagent when you are dealing with ozonolysis reaction. What will you do in ozonolysis reactions? You simply cleave and then insert O. You cleave the bond and then you insert O. Itu sahaja yang awak boleh buat. Awak dah tak ada nak, nak jadi carboxylic acid ke apa. So bila awak cleave dapat masukkan oksigen, means the product from ozonolysis will only be aldehyde or ketone. Okay, how do you determine whether you're going to have ketone or aldehyde? When you got no hydrogen attached to the carbonyl group, means you're going to form ketone. This is the first carbon on the left. And then as for the carbon on the right, you got one hydrogen on them. Kalau ada dua sekalipun, 
Bila kita ada kar karbonil group, dia akan jadi ketone. So, ozonolysis hanya dapat ketone or aldehyde sahaja. Reactions with hot acidified carbonyl will form either ketone, carboxylic acid and CO2 and water. Ikutlah, depends hydrogen yang ada kat dia. Okay, so ada itu sahaja berapa? 8 campur 9, 10. So 10 reactions untuk alkin. Kita ada eliminations, additions and oxidative cleavage. Okay, since you learned about hydrocarbons, we have 5.1 alkin and 5.2 alkenes. So how are we going to distinguish whether they are alkene or alkene? Okay, kita akan guna unsaturated test. Ini kita panggil dia chemical test. Chemical test ni memang ada untuk kita check whether they are alkene or alkene from the reagent in the lab. So what is the functions of this unsaturated test? We want to test the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. If you have carbon-carbon double bond, means they are going to change the color of the solution. Let's say macam like tu. Another uh, function is to distinguish whether they are alkene or alkene. Okay, we have three unsaturated tests altogether, the chemical test lah. Okay, the first one, we call them as Bayer's test. You have this alkene, react with the terminal fall, but this time, this terminal fall is not hot acidified terminal fall. This is a cold terminal fall. Bila cold terminal fall, cara tulis the terminal fall, on this arrow, we have diluted, dilute with the presence of base. Yang hot acidified, ada acid. Kalau cold, dia ada base. Boleh? Boleh beza? Hot dengan cold lain. Hot adalah uh, heat. Eh, sorry. Hot dia guna acid. Kalau cold dia guna base. Sebab tu awak ada OH minus. And then together with cold kat sini. Okay. Once the reaction is taking place. Okay. Bila reaction is taking place on alkene, dia akan buat addition. Okay. Kita akan dapat product of diol. From this reaction, we gonna add two OH group on your alkene. So you first form this diol. Diol means alcohol, tetapi ada dua alcohol, ada dua hydroxyl group attached to your compound. And together with it, we have this precipitate of MnO2. Okay, manganese. Okay, so sekarang ni, bila sebut brown precipitate, bila ada arrow ke bawah, maksudnya precipitate form. Kalau arrow ke atas, gas release. Okay, so bila dia minta awak keluarkan chemical test macam yang nak jawab, kena keluarkan semua ni together with the observations. So the observations is purple color of caminophore decolorize. Sebab apa decolorize? Sebab dia dapat this diol. Another thing is to mention brown precipitate form. So this is how you answer the chemical test, um, chemical test punya jawapan. Okay, this is the first step, uh, the first test. Okay, saya nak habiskan lagi dua test je. Sikit lagi. Okay, then we have bromine test. Bromine test in inert solvent. We know bromine test is basically the halogenations lah. You want to add halogen. So when you have this bromine test in inert solvent, you're going to substitute, you're going to add two Br on your carbon-carbon double bond. So what is the observations here? Okay, basically bromine test in inert solvent and bromine test in water, they are... Observations is the same. Either or, awak boleh bagi salah satu. Bukannya bagi dua-dua. Salah satu. Bromine test in inert solvent, bromine test in water. Observations is reddish brown color of Br2 decolorize. Maksudnya bromine test ni, bila awak ada alkene, undergo uh, chemical test with bromine in water, you gonna get this Br and OH means reactions taking place other observation. Contohnya kita ada alkene kita react dengan bromine dan juga water, akan ada keberlaku reactions dalam alkin yang kita belajar tu, ada tak bromine in water dalam alkin? Tak ada miss. Tak ada. So, kalau alkin dia akan bagi observation. Kalau alkin dia kata no reddish brown colour uh, ataupun reddish brown colour of Br2 remain unchanged. Maksudnya observation dia tak berubah sebab tak ada berlaku apa-apa. Sebab tak ada pun reactions tu dalam alkin. Ah, itu sahaja untuk 5.2. Awak belajar reactions, awak belajar naming, awak belajar reactions, ada tiga jenis, eliminations, additions dan oxidative cleavage. Dan awak belajar chemical test to differentiate between alkene and alkene. Alkene since they are going to form reaction means there is positive observation. Kalau alkene sebab tak ada reactions yang tu berlaku pada alkene means the 
observation is negative. Maksudnya negative result lah. Tak ada observation yang kita nampak. Okay. Itu sahaja untuk chapter 5. Alright. Thank you, Miss. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum.